Hello and welcome to the 360 Payments training video on Transaction Express. Today we'll be going over a couple of basic functions within the Transaction Express gateway. As you can see here, I'm already signed in to the virtual terminal, so we're ready to begin. The first thing I would like to point out is how to save a customer's information, also known as a wallet. A wallet is important to save if you ever plan on running the customer's card again in the future. Here's how you would add a wallet. The first step is clicking on My Services. Once you're under My Services, you can go ahead and click Wallet. This is going to take you to a window that provides the ability to add a wallet as well as search for a wallet. Since we're adding a wallet today, we don't need to fill in any of the fields you see listed here, and we can simply select the button that says Add Customer. Now a new window will appear that allows you to add a customer. The only data that you need to enter when in Transaction Express are the fields that are blue, but we do recommend that you enter in as much data as you can. So for today's purposes, we will go ahead and add a or example customer. We'll enter in the address for this customer. phone number, and the email. Once we've got all of our information entered, we can go ahead and proceed to add customer. Now you'll notice that as soon as you press that add customer button, a window pops up asking if we want to add the wallet to the customer. And the wallet is where we store the credit card data. So we'll go ahead and select yes. Once yes has been selected, the window will appear for us to add the credit card number. So as you can see, the account number is in blue. And then the expiration date is as well, which means these are mandatory fields. So let's go ahead and add the account number. Let's select our expiration date as well. Now, since we're doing a test here and I entered in a test card number, you can see that the account number field is highlighted in red as the system is recognizing that this is not a valid card number. Now if that ever happens and you try to add the wallet, the system will let you know that the card number is invalid. But had we been adding an actual customer with a valid card number, the wallet would have been added successfully and the customer saved. And that wallet would allow us to be able to access the customer's card data at any time encrypted to run a secure transaction in the future. Now, as we move along, the next thing I'd like to point out is how to run a sale within Transaction Express. Now, let's assume that we're running a one-time sale and that we don't need to save the customer's wallet as there's no foreseeable future transactions. To do that, we would simply click the Transact tab. Once we click the tab, several options will appear based upon the allowances that are set for your login. For us, we simply need to click sale. As you can see here, the sale window has appeared. As I mentioned earlier, the blue fields are fields that are mandatory and must be entered in order to proceed with the sale. You'll also 
fine. There are some fields that are in a yellow color. Now those fields are not mandatory, but instead recommended. We do highly recommend that the address and zip code is entered as it provides a more secure transaction as well as provides you with a better rate for any keyed in transactions. So from here, it's pretty self-explanatory. For account number, you would enter the 16 digit card number or 15 digit if it's American Express. Expiration date will be the expiration date associated with the card and the amount will be the amount. To the right is where you'll want to enter the address information if available, the phone number and the email if you would like the customer to receive an email receipt. If we go back to the left side, there's a field here, customer reference ID, and that's not blue or yellow. This is an optional field where you can enter a piece of information that can be used to search for this transaction later. So for example, if you are a swim lesson business and you are running a payment for a child named John's swim lesson, you could write John Smith's swim lesson. And in the future, you could search that field and this transaction would appear. Just beneath that is a field labeled CVV2 slash CID. And that is where you'll want to enter the three digit code on the back of the card or the four digit code that appears on the front of American Express cards. This is not blue or yellow either, but it is recommended. And if you ever see the these little question marks next to a field, please feel free to click on it as it will provide an explanation of what that field is seeking or what needs to be entered there. So that's how you run a sale in Transaction Express. Now let's take a look at how to run a refund. To run a refund, we there are a couple ways you can do it. We recommend that you access the original transaction that was processed, and then refund it from there so that everything correlates to each other. To do that, you'll wanna click the tab that's labeled credit card reports. Once you click that, you'll see several options appear that may vary based upon the allowances set on your login. The option that we want is the credit card transaction detail report. Now this will pull up a search field and you're going to want to manipulate the date range to bring up the date on which the transaction was run that needs to now be refunded. So for example, if the transaction was run yesterday, we can change the front date to the prior day and the to date to the prior day, allowing us to only view transactions run that day. Go ahead and hit submit once you have set the proper date range. Now doing this will bring up any sales that were processed. Since we're just doing a test today, you can see that it didn't pull up any sales because none were run yesterday. But if there had been, you would see the sale listed here. You would see the date, the amount, and then to the right, right about here, would be a blue link that says credit slash refund. You would simply click that link and a window would appear allowing you to select how much of that transaction you wanna refund, giving you the ability to refund the entire sale amount or just a portion of it. So now you know how to do a refund in Transaction Express. That does conclude today's training on the basic functions of the Transaction Express Virtual Terminal. There are several other functions available if you are seeking more complex ways to run transactions or view reports. If you'd like to have an additional training on how to use those more complex functions, please simply reach out to our customer service team at 408-295-8360. Thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you have a great day.